We are back with One Piece once again, chapter 1056, another absolute banger, and this time I wanted to switch it up a little bit. I was just fiending for the chapter, honestly, so I read it immediately, and I'm just going to do a usual sort of review and talk about all the absolutely insane things that happened in this chapter, because there's, there's a lot, there really is a lot. So let's just go into this point by point first. Uh, probably the most hype thing about the entire chapter. I got this straight from the Grand Line itself. Uh, my guy, Captain Captain Buggy, he's apparently aligned with Crocodile and Mihawk in order to create this new group. It's called the Cross Guild. I have no idea how this is going to go down, but I've seen some things that could be really, really compelling. So, Buggy, the greatest rival to Luffy of all time, except Blackbeard. Maybe Buggy might top Blackbeard if we're being honest. And Mihawk, the greatest rival to Zoro. The fact that these two are connected now means that Buggy and Crocodile and Mihawk are all going to have some sort of resurfacing presence with the Straw Hat crew. Now this is really compelling, especially because we just found out about Pluton. Pluton now being in Wano and this more than likely reconnection with Crocodile could add a lot of really cool stuff. Firstly, we're going to see Robin interact with Crocodile again, which is something I've been hoping for for a really, really long time. I think it'd be really cool. Secondly, we're going to see Frankie talk about Pluton. And obviously Crocodile is going to be like, you lied. You, you literally lied to me, Miss All Sunday. What's going on right here? I think there's a lot of potential with Crocodile's resurfacing in the story. And it could be really cool. I'm actually really, really excited for it. Obviously, Zoro is going to fight Mihawk. It's going to be really sick. I thought that Mihawk would align with Shanks. It just makes a lot of sense to me. They're friends, they were kind of rivals, but I think that Mihawk probably didn't want to align with Shanks for some reason we might not know. But in my opinion, it's because if he aligns with Shanks, that would make him seem inferior to Shanks and they're more rivals than friends because they used to have sword duels all the time. If we have some sort of monster trio now of Buggy's group, and sadly, Mr. Three is not one of them, which, that, that hurts. That hurts to hear. Mr. Three Yonko Commander, he, he would have been a menace. Honestly, if we do have some sort of monster trio battle, perhaps a Davy backfight for Pluton, since Luffy doesn't really want or care about Pluton, which is just awesome. That was probably one of my favorite parts of the chapter. Maybe Buggy is going to have a Davy backfight for Pluton. I think that could be really fun, honestly. I don't know how exactly... It's gonna go down if this does at all but i think it would be really cool caribou is also a big sort of factor when it comes to all this stuff i think that caribou's now knowledge of two of the ancient weapons is a big deal this is a huge deal i think another really wild theory is relating to buggy himself now as you can see right here in this amazing ad from the grand line buggy my guy here he's got his tongue out in like every single thing ever now, this is not specific to Buggy. We all know that Big Mom has this in her bounty poster, but Caribou has the same sort of motif as well. And I think it'd be very, very crazy if Caribou has been following under Buggy this entire time and all the info he's been giving is not to Blackbeard, but actually Buggy. I think that would be a very, very shocking development and would allow for a perfect segue into fighting these three. I think it'd be really, really cool. Honestly, the Cross Guild really has me compelled, not just because it's Buggy, Mihawk, and Crocodile working together, but this seems like the modern rendition of the Rocks Pirates. Buggy, Mihawk, and Crocodile, all three Warlords of the Sea, have such immense clout and status in the One Piece world, and some of them are actually strong. Like, Mihawk is really, really strong. Crocodile, we don't know how strong he is at this point, and Buggy... You know, he's got more clout than almost anyone in the One Piece world. So these three coming together feels as though it is very, very reminiscent of the Rocks Pirates, people who just came together for strength and not because they had faith in each other or anything really. And that kind of alarms me that Buggy, outside of Blackbeard, has the most parallels to Rocks. Now, I don't know how far I'm willing to go with the whole Buggy or Shanks is Rox's son idea. I think it's really compelling, but I don't know if this is exactly what I want to say is like a confirmation that there's some connection between Buggy and Rox. 
I don't really know. But I just wanted to point out that this cross guild thing just really, really reminds me of the Rocks Pirates with the way it is structured. Now, I don't know if they do actually have faith in each other. It would be strange if Crocodile sort of didn't trust Buggy and used him after his entire arc in Alabasta and Impel Down was learning to ha have faith in other people. I don't really know. But that's my thoughts on this, at least. I would like to know what you guys think about the whole cross guild rocks pirates parallel because i thought this was really really compelling and i just wanted to bring this up so more people could sort of feel out this idea i didn't even get to the craziest part so buggy he obviously has never wanted to really do anything buggy's very lazy he's very much a character that relies on other people to do the work for him like blackbeard but he has a sort of air of charisma about him that people just are drawn to he's like a weird fusion of blackbeard and luffy if we're looking about it like that so buggy being the galactic brain genius that this dude is decides hey you know how the marines have bounties on us let's put bounties on the marines now and he does this is genuinely one of the coolest things oda's ever done with one piece in my opinion this reveal is so nothing the panel is like the bottom of the page. It's so nothing. It's in the corner, but it's just like, wait, what? What? <laughs> You're telling me Buggy just set up a whole reverse bounty system? And Kid in this panel says, it looks like the hunters have become the hunted. And yes, that is the ultimate sign that this is the new age. Things are going nuts. Everything that we have had in this entire series is just out the window right now. It's awesome. It's genuinely really, really cool. And I can't believe that Buggy of all the people was the one to think of this and not like Kaido or I don't know, even Blackbeard. But Buggy doing it is so in character that I'm absolutely fine with it because of course Buggy's not gonna wanna go after the Marines. So he's going to encourage his followers and everyone around the world to do this because Buggy being the head of the underworld has so much money, he could just pay them off. He totally could. And this is the best part. Everything about these decisions makes so much sense. This is why I can't fathom people saying Buggy shouldn't be a Yonko. Buggy is a genius. Buggy is a fearful coward who is not strong. His influence is literally immense. And now he's literally shifted up the entire structure of the world buggy is really just that guy you know it's it's not hard to see this but now he's setting up bounties on the people who set up bounties it's ridiculous buggy is just he's next level he's really next level and i don't understand why people are just not feeling him as yonko he he deserves to be one sure he's not strong but that doesn't even matter it's the clout he's clouded up and that's all that matters final thoughts about buggy because i know this has been probably a long time uh this is awesome all of this stuff the cross guild crocodiles resurfacing in the story right when pluton is resurfacing in the story perfect of course he's back and this cross guild idea has me really really excited so i genuinely cannot wait to see what comes out of this but let's get on to the other stuff that is absolutely insane about this chapter and firstly i just want to say you know this buggy thing that was my big w you know my big w was buggy's a yonko here's why here's all the things that's going on now mihawk and crocodile did join which i did not think would happen but a lot of people did and i'm not mad about this at all another big w in my opinion this is now my second big w of one piece so you know it is Carrot not joining the crew. Now, Carrot, I never thought was going to join the crew because she did not have that moment with Luffy in Whole Cake Island. Jinbei, even though he didn't have that many moments in the crew, you know, until Fisherman Island and then Whole Cake Island again, I knew he was joining. You know, Jinbei was that guy since Marineford. Jinbei saved Luffy countless times and then inspired him to keep going and not become like Moria and Crocodile. You know, Jinbei, he's joining. There's no debate. He's that guy. And then in Fishman Island, he was asked to join. Of course he was. He's that guy. Now, Carrot never had that real scene with Luffy. You know, there could have been something brewing up to the Pedro bombing moment. But no, there wasn't really a moment. Carrot had moments with Chopper. You know, that was her whole thing. 
Chopper was the big bro. Luffy was doing a bunch of other stuff. He was with Nami, he was dealing with Sanji, he was dealing with Jinbei, you know? He was dealing with Big Mom and Katakuri. A lot of characters Luffy had to interact with and Carrot just kind of fell to the wayside. So when Carrot did not have as much of a presence in Wano, very little presence in Wano, if I might add, I'm kind of, you know, I'm just thinking she's not joining. She's not joining the crew and she isn't. She's actually doing exactly what I thought she was going to do. She is the mink ally to Luffy. Now, in this theory, I said that all the scabs are going to die. Clearly, two of them died, and that's it. And Conjuro, you know, so really three, but he wasn't really a scabbard, you know what I mean? But now, Inuarshi, Nekomamashi, they're staying. They're Momo's retainers now. So, Carrot is now the leader of Zo, which is wild, because this is literally... <laughs> literally uh exactly what i said you know this is this is all i wanted carrot is the mink ally to luffy she is the force that pushes the new generation of zo to help luffy and the straw hats and she will be the voice of the new generation while inu and neko they're the old generation they literally have lived all their lives they've already been on this massive adventure carrot is on the new pirate king's adventure and that's why she is the new leader of Zo. Pedro wasn't able to be in Roger's journey, but Pedro helped benefit Luffy's journey. Carrot noticed this. Carrot is the one who will inherit Pedro's will more than anyone. She is a great example of the new generation thing that Luffy has been doing with almost every kingdom he's been in. Vivi with Alabasta. You know, now that Cobra is gone, Vivi is now in charge if you know she ever is in charge and alabasta isn't burning to the ground inu and neko they're doing their thing with momo and they're gonna align with momo and momo's aligning with luffy we know this but zo zo needs someone new someone fresh someone who's going to last a long time and tell the story of luffy and this great journey they've all been on so carrot is the best pick she literally is and her role as the new leader of zo is something I'm really looking forward to. Those are all my thoughts on Carrot not being in the crew. I have no qualms with this whatsoever. I did think that some other people would be in the crew before her even. Uh, like Vivi, of course she's gonna join the crew. She's a part of them forever. Now we're gonna talk about Yamato because it's very, very, very likely that Yamato is joining the crew. Momo had this whole scene where he's running through the castle and calling out all the Straw Hats names and then Yamato, as the last in a separate panel. Meaning, it's very, very likely that Yamato is going to join the crew. Am I mad about this? Not really. Yamato is pretty cool. There's gonna be this whole inherited will thing with, you know, Odin and Ace even, which could be really cool. And this could directly lead into what's happening right now with the Straw Hats. Straw Hats are finally finally splitting from law which is kind of insane to think about because law has been on this journey with them for like a decade in real time and he's not gonna be there anymore that's just surreal and kid is also you know he's going on his way all three of them they're going on their own journeys law is heading directly towards the end of the grand line and then luffy he's going literally the exact other way so luffy he's going off on some other place but here's where things i think get interesting. Yamato, more than likely at this point, is joining the crew. Yamato is a fan favorite character. The merch has, you know, exploded. It doesn't even matter if you don't like Yamato. You cannot deny their influence, you know? So having Yamato join the crew, very cool for a lot of people. But the thing that makes me the most excited about Yamato joining the crew is the idea that Luffy and Yamato are both going to go to Ace's grave well, and Whitebeard's grave, but mostly Ace's grave in this sense, and finally have that moment where they see, you know, Ace, they finally see him and they have a drink together. That was the whole thing they wanted to do, you know? And the thing that started all of that post time skip was Ace's death. If we end this super saga with seeing Ace's grave, I think that would be really awesome. You know, a great way to bookend this part of the story we're done. You know, we're on the new part. His importance will never leave the story, but the idea of him being the bookend between the pre-time skip finale and now this super saga that has lasted over a decade, I think it would be really, really cool. And it would also allow for us to see more of the Whitebeard Pirates, what they're up to, 
Maybe Marco will guide them there too at the end of all the shenanigans. Oda has not been missing in this little post Wano arc at all. Honestly, I think this is the best info dump we might have ever gotten in One Piece, honestly, because we just, we're just waiting. You know, we're just waiting for all the absolute insanity that's gonna ensue. Post Annie's Lobby was a huge info dump with a lot of crazy reveals like Dragon, the Yonko, Kobe, Garp, a lot, you know, a lot of crazy stuff. But this is, this is insane. Like Luffy's a Yonko, Buggy's a Yonko, Buggy's aligned with Mihawk and Crocodile. Pluton is in Wano, you know? There's just a lot of crazy stuff. The Man Marked by Flames. Now this is a lot of potential. I don't really know how exactly Oda's gonna go about this because there's a lot of potential, genuinely. People could be thinking it's Sabo. People could be thinking it's Aokiji. People could be thinking it's a brand new character. A lot of people even think it's Scopper because Scopper's gotta be important in the story somehow. But I don't really know who it's gonna be in full honesty. My hunch is that it is Aokiji. And that Aokiji is not the 10th Titan, 10th Titanic captain and Aruj is. That's something I've thought about for a while because Aruj likes Blackbeard. So of course he would want to align with Blackbeard and we have no idea what Aruj is up to. I think it might be Aokiji because we know Aokiji is in the loop with some underworld stuff. And that kid is also in the loop from some underworld stuff from Punk Hazard. So I don't know. I think there's some sort of connection there and that it could link up pretty well you know I, that's just my fun little theory right now it draws a lot of intrigue you know law looked very shocked and like fully shaded when kid was talking about him so this dude has to be some kind of big deal and robin didn't even know who he was so again i think it has to do something with the underworld since law obviously works for Dope Flamingo, the former head of the underworld of this world. And the fact they weren't at Big Mom's wedding also brings up some sort of mystery around them, unless they were, and we're getting that sort of reveal of their hidden moniker that they might have besides what they do. I don't know. I am very intrigued by what this character can offer. And yeah, I just wanted to do a little, little theory right there, you know, about who they might be. That's really all from me. I would love to know what your favorite moment of the chapter was because there's actually a lot of really cool moments. One Piece is the greatest series of all time. And yeah, hope you enjoy and have a good one.